coming in. So here it is, 615. Um, um, Dude, could you be a little louder? I can't, I can barely hear you. Must be my mask. Mm. All right, so here it is, 615 on November the 8th, and we're going to um, bring this meeting to open. We have um, Pat and I are here, but um, Frank Severy's not feeling too good, so he's zooming in so he doesn't share with us. And um, we are, we have posted this uh, agenda on the website and in publicly in town and email to interested parties so we can we can legally conduct this meeting and we will be um, taking public comments at the end of the meeting and we'll be limiting those to five minutes per per speech on that and we're going to start out with the minutes from the prior meeting of october 25th martha can you hear me now Yes, I can. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, they look good to me. Do, um, Frank, Pat, do you have any modifications or changes? No, I do not. They're fine with me. Yeah. All right. Then I had moved to approve the minutes of the October 25th meeting. I second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. All right. Cool. And we have... Um, on the guests here, we've got um, Terry Severy and some others from the fire department, and I presume you want to talk about the um, a discussion to purchase a secondhand compressor for the fire department. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you want to um, come on up and give us a little presentation so they can hear you in the, in the Zoom? Uh, because we haven't had Easter for two years, is the paper I gave you. Yeah. And uh, missed a supper this fall, couldn't do because of COVID. And then the budget last year, we had 3,300. We couldn't get holes for six months because of COVID backup. So if you told up, you know, Easter, we usually take in 42 to 4,500, somewhere in there. And so if you figured it up, it's at the low end, it's 14.7. And what we're really doing is looking for, you know, a commitment out of the town to say maybe some of the funds that we're getting the money from the state. Mm -hmm. And see, because the compressor is going to be in the range of 15 grand for the compressor and fill station, which we figure, we think it's a really good deal. Uh, it's a second-hand one, but still, it's uh, cool. way ahead of 65000 Way ahead, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are you getting it? Who's got it? Uh, I don't exactly know yet where it's yeah. coming from. Mm -hmm. It's coming out of Massachusetts. So MES is the company that yeah. we'd be buying it from. Uh, but our donations have been way off in the last two years. We haven't, we don't get hardly anything now since COVID took over. Yeah. And, you know, we just, we aren't asking for, you know, we just like, some way we got to raise this money to buy this thing because you know we just need it for training. Mm -hmm. I mean it's essential, really. Excuse and, me, Terry. Um, how much did you say you had raised? Was it fourteen thousand seven hundred? No, we haven't raised anything. Oh, haven't raised anything. Pardon me. Why did I get that? Because of the lack of the fundraising. This lack of fundraising. Yeah. We haven't done any fundraising in two years. And this year's not looking any better like we're going to be able to do it this year either. So I, I think that's a pretty clear um, result of the COVID, which is what, you know, in terms of these um, stimulus funds, I think that's a, it's a reasonable, um, pretty clear use for that. And from the beginning, we were thinking that the um, fire Jim, department... You can't, you're so faint, I can't hear All you. Right. The, um, from... From the beginning of trying to figure out how we can legally distribute some of these stimulus funds that we've got, the the, um, the fire department seemed like a pretty obvious um, candidate for that, seeing as they canceled their Easter suppers and fundraising activities. So um, I think that's that's um, a pretty reasonable ask. You, Pat, I Pat, agree, you got totally. anything? Yep. We probably aren't going to... He said I wouldn't know for four to six weeks on when you would take it. Yeah. But it's going to be a, you know, they'll bring it up, hook it up. And... Can't hear. Well, I'm having a difficult time hearing you there, doing So 
I'm not sure what you guys said. Sorry. Yeah, we here, probably right? won't get it for four to six weeks because that's when they're going to get it in. Yeah. And then they're going to service it, put a stamp on it saying it's all passed, and and we do we have them come and service it every year. It's a tight thing you can't afford to have something bad. Yeah. So, um, excuse me, June, am I correct that it, you're going to be using, it was very faint, you're going to be using some town stimulus funds to pay for that $15,000 cost? You yes. That's what, you that, that's, what, that's what we're talking about, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry, you guys are very That's all right. Fine. So, I can double check with Larry. Um, yeah. we, we have the money. Right. So I can double check with Larry to make sure that that fits into the criteria of all the ARPA funding, which I'm I'm also pretty confident that it would. So we can check with Larry that way when you have that conversation um, with is it NES or MES? MES. MES. Um, you can have it with a firm footing that we would be able to provide the funding. Right. Okay. So what we would need from them would be uh, a purchase order. Right. Well, I'm not. We aren't going to get that because he said he didn't know exact price on it. Okay. He had to check with the higher up. And the size of this compressor was there something about thirty horsepower or something? No, no. no. It's just it's big enough to fill our air bottles, which are twenty-two, sixteen. That's the pressure. That's the pressure. Okay. Okay. So. Need to be loud. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the gist of this is we're going to verify with Larry, who's been um, kind of been our advisor on the ARPA funds, and but uh, the sense of the board here is that that's a reasonable ask, and and um, encourage the fire department to go ahead and say they're interested in that used compressor. Are you Frank. That? Um, Frank, you have something? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, and I, I think we also uh, would probably want to take beyond just the board, um, take some input from the town and, and, and suggestions. This is, uh, I think, uh, would be something good to put on the agenda for the town meeting to um, bring up and, and invite the public to bring their thoughts on that. They may not be aware of the constrictions that there are on the funds, but we could at least put it out there and, and ask their input. I agree with that. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, what's your question, Robert? Who is Larry? Larry Strauss. Well, it, you know, people from out of state are buying real estate. They don't know who Larry is. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, everyone. If, if you wouldn't mind, I think that at the beginning right. of a select board meeting, a school board meeting, a board of civil authority meeting, every elected official and an appointed official should introduce themselves by name and their position, especially right. regarding the planning board. The, um, so Nancy, I'm, I'm, I'm a little upset. Uh, you seemed a little despondent, but people don't know who people are, even though they live in the town. The last planning and zoning board, I would recommend that so every, the select board members, the planning we've got, board. We've got your um, point. Now, Larry Strauss is not present at Zoom or in the room here tonight, so that wouldn't help anything, but we have clarified that that it is is Larry. And, well, Larry's, um, Larry's yeah. affecting the decision, and I don't know who, I, I know Larry Strauss, but when you guys say Larry did this and Larry did that, you know, Okay, we got your point. 
Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Um, are you guys were pretty much done with that? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm okay with it. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you guys for Thank coming. You. Did you have you had anything else you wanted to to add? No. All right. Thanks for coming. Wait, wait. Is the meeting over? No. No. This conversation about the fire department um, asking about purchasing the compressor is over. We're moving on to the the next item, which is discussing the new increased dog license rates. Not surprising. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, Julie, do you want to speak to to sure. your thoughts on on this? Uh, sure. In the past, um, our rates uh, for a spayed and or neutered were was seven dollars, and the non spayed and or neutered was thirteen. And we're going to raise it. Or I'm sorry, was seven and eleven, and now we're going to. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Sorry. So. I'm sorry. We're looking to increase the fees for the dogs licenses because we mail out all of the licenses in December for the April deadline. And in order to um, keep up with the, sorry. In order to keep up with the fees with- Recording in progress. Sorry. In order to keep up with the increase of postage and um, uh, sending out notices, we thought that it would be wise to um, ask the board if we could increase the spayed and neutered from seven to nine and the non spayed to from um, 11 to 13. And then after April 1st, there will be a $5 late fee plus 50% added to each license, which is state. That's that's a state. Can I ask you a question? Briefly, yeah. Could you? Briefly? Yeah. You're, you're, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll wait three seconds and then continue. How many dogs are in Rochester? Uh, Kristen, could you answer that? Um, yes, this year we've registered approximately 312, um, with a handful of people that I know that have dogs, but have yet to license them. So at the end of the day, if every dog was registered and licensed, what would the outcome with the increase be? Three hundred times two, six hundred dollars. Six hundred bucks. Six hundred dollars. So the town takes in six hundred dollars. That would be the increase. Over what was the the number they're adding the six hundred dollars to? Seven times three hundred would be twenty twenty one hundred dollars, right? Roughly twenty one hundred dollars. So twenty one plus six is twenty seven. Right. Well, kudos. Three hundred times seven. Three hundred times seven is twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, is that was that your question, Robert? Well, I think we have other things to focus on rather than people's dogs because that increase. All right, but that's on the agenda, Robert. So could you please um, hold your comments until we have something that you want to um, specifically talk about, other than complaining about what's on the agenda? Um, so I'd I'd move to accept this increase in the in the prices. Yes, I second it. Yep, Frank. I I'm in favor. Okay, all in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you for putting that together, Julie. Okay. Yep. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, approving a preventative maintenance contract for the town office elevator. Also, something that we are pretty required to do. And this is with Access Mobility. Is this who we were using um, before? Yeah. And has, have they changed anything price-wise? No, we're looking at $375 per year and a 5% discount on all parts, uh, not including Vermont sales tax. 
So I move to approve the contract with Access Mobility for maintaining the, the elevator in the uh, town office. So I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, and now we have, um, we've been currently using the, um, um, I'm getting to me a blank. What's the other? Um, MVP. MVP, MVP. Now, yeah, we were using them uh, last year for our employee health insurance, and we're yeah. um, we have to look at how we're going to go forward with them. Yeah, and so is that MVP? Speak up, Maybe speak up. Do could you repeat that acronym? MVP. It's one of the main health insurance offers out there, other than Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Well, so, you see that like really, I'm supposed to assume that I know it. Well, so it's, um, it's in. All right. Yep. So, Julie, you want to um, speak sure. on that? So, uh, the two the two carriers, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, and MVP, for the platinum that the um, current employees have. Uh, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. sorry. Excuse me. Uh, MVP and Blue Cross and Blue Shield both carry are, are the carriers that were that the select board is looking at. The um, MVP is what the employees have been using, um, and starting in January, Blue Cross and Blue Shield will increase by eighty dollars. The um, benefits on both are identical. And so it's just up to the board to decide if they want to continue with MVP. Um, and they, I think they only went up $12. So, and have our employees been satisfied with the service they've been getting from MVP? Then no yeah. complaints on that? No. And it still um, appears to be uh, the better deal? I, I would. I would think that we would want to continue on using MVP. Do you guys, Frank, Pat, you have any comments? No, we did our research and I think it's a great, it's just a lot of review. Yep. All right. So I think if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Okay. So I would um, move to continue on with MVP, the platinum monthly plan for the town employees. I second it. All in favor? All, All right. right. Okay. Thank you. Now, um, that goes to, oh, lots of papers with that one. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have uh, application from Ken Beatty, um, DBA Beatty Earthworks, um, for a um, the uh, class class four highway maintenance permit for Oak Lodge Road. Um, it's basically. Um, winter plowing, removal of down trees and um, seasonal filling of potholes and, and or um, stone raking. So these- This is the uh, second or third year that he's third year. This third would year. be the third yeah. year that he's, he's oh. taken this on. And we have had no complaints from the public or comments from the public. So no, he seems to be- Responsibly, I, I, can, I care cannot hear. I, I didn't hear Patty Harvey's comment. Ben was saying that we we've, we've had no complaints of the work that Kenny has done from the public um, or neighbors, and he's been. Um, this will be the third year that he's asked for permission to maintain this road. So, um, I I'd, I'd move to approve this. I second that. Yep. All in favor? Oh. Aye. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. The um, next topic is the emergency generator grant. Um, we've got, um, Joan, have you got something that you want to say? Um, yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I've been, yeah, I've been working with Frank on this. Um, and what I did on Friday was to call the three uh, companies that had submitted quotes for us back when we were just applying for the grant in order to find out what the supply of generators um, in the power that we're looking to purchase 
what their availability is these days, given a lot of supply chain issues. And also if they could say anything about what was happening to the price of both the generators themselves and any major parts that we would need for installation. And all three of them, slightly different ways, basically said, yeah, well, some generators um, are in very short supply. They seem to be more the ones used at the retail or residential level more than uh, the size we're looking for. We're in the 10 to 12 or 14 kilowatt size, which is, it's, it's large for residential. But anyway, what I'm being told is that they're sort of in stock in one, uh, at one company, they have a few that they were able to get early on and um, have been stockpiling them. Uh, another one says they have uh, a 10 kilowatt um, they have a few of them left, and if we order it sooner rather than later, we would be waiting a few months for it. So they were recommending that we order it um, sometime soon, and then we would have it three, four, five months is what they're guessing right now. Um, that, that particular supplier said that the cost of the generators hasn't gone up that much. Um, but their installation costs have because of labor shortages. And then the final um, contractor that we got a quote from said they had a few 10 kilowatt uh, Kohlers in stock and the price had gone up $400 on those, uh, but everything else installation wise was the same for them. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag, but it seems like uh, if the town wants to go ahead and, and get started on that, um, you know, we're not going to lose anything. Or we could wait a couple of months and it would probably be about the same situation. So, Frank, you want to add anything to that? No, I, I think you covered it pretty well, Joan. I, I think uh, in, in uh, looking forward, I think we should probably order it up and get set on it so we have it in stock and get ready to, to prepare for that. The grant's good until December, is that correct? Oh, uh, December of 20, yeah, 2022. So we do have time. Um, if we put out the bid, uh, probably I would say January, um, then by the time the ground is unfrozen and they can start digging um, and doing the installation and getting the, uh, the parts and the, and the generators in, you know, March, April, something like that. So, excuse me, um, Joan, do you have, um, you said there were three uh, companies that had made bids. Are you and Frank recommending any particular company to the board? They were not bids, they were just quotes. Oh, excuse me, quotes, pardon me. They were quotes that were required for uh, applying for the grant. And are those the the uh, amounts that they quoted? Are they within the the grant parameters or, or the, the amount of money we were looking at getting? Well, it's not clear now. Um, from talking to these three different companies, it appears that there's possibly, or pro I think we can probably expect some increase, either in the cost of the generators or the cost of installation, or possibly both. Um, doesn't seem to be. No, no one's, you know, sounding the alarm and saying it's going to be up a whole lot. Um, I don't know if they were just being salesmen about it. Yeah. Uh, now, the, um, bids, the bids came in um, a little bit less than what we got the grant for just to uh, help with that specific issue. Um, but we weren't sure how much of the increase was going to be. But that's how we determined the size of the grant. That's how that grant was determined by the three bids that we got. Right, the quotes, and, yeah. And where did the, the grant quotes. come from? Excuse me, I've, I've forgotten. It's a federal grant. Thank you. From FEMA. So Je Jeffrey, I don't know if you wanted to chime in here. You had um, put forth the question about whether or not the town had considered um, investing in a battery bank instead of a generator to provide the same service. And it's, um, it appears to me that, that the, um, the nature of this as an emergency source standing there would 
not play well with the batteries, which would just, they don't like to sit. They want to be used. You know what I mean? And so that, that was some of the information that I got that it is, it's not totally uh, um, an optimal use of a battery bank to be just sitting there charged waiting for an emergency. Um, it could well be, Dune. I do not know uh, that much about the battery banks. I, my question was if they can perform the same job, provide the same kilowatt output and coverage, um, is there flexibility in the grant to switch from a fossil fuel system to an electrified system? Uh, my understanding is that uh, a residential, um, like a, a Tesla battery, is about a 13 kilowatt uh, system. Um, and I don't know that, it, that that as a residential system would be appropriate either. Um, pretty much all generators need to be exercised. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. fossil fuel generators are supposed to be run a certain number of hours each month to keep yep. them in prime condition. Um, I don't know what the uh, requirement for use, discharge, and recharge would be uh, from you know uh, an electrified system. But the the big question was: Is there any flexibility in the grant if it? If this, if the um, function could be served um, with a non-fossil fuel system, that I don't know. I'm not sure uh, the funders really care how we power it, but we did pre present it uh, the proposal to them, the grant request to them uh, with certain specifications. Um, can I make a? Can I make a suggestion? Hello. Yeah, we hear you. What's what's your suggestion, Robert? Well, in all due respect of Jeff, Jeffrey Gephardt, I am in, totally into batteries. I live off the grid, and I know what it takes to run my home. And uh, Jeffrey's futuristic look is very respected. But the problem is, we still need the generator, like you said, Doom, to exercise the batteries. It's like if you have a generator and you don't run it, the generator goes dead. If you have batteries that aren't exercised, the batteries go dead. So it goes back to the, um, you know, the question of this um, thing we're into, uh, which I totally respect um, with regards to energy and what I have to do in my home every day to just be on this interview or this meeting tonight. I know what I have to do. I know what I have to generate know what the batteries in my home will generate but jeffrey or doing you're right they have to be exercised you can't just have a bunch of batteries sitting down there somewhere without being it's kind of like yeah. taking a walk if you don't walk um yeah. you're going to be atrophied no thank you robert um that's um i guess that maybe that plays into i know understand when the people put the tesla batteries in that the power company um has it can drain them up or down and that's perhaps that is part of the necessity to exercise them but you could also have the power go out and not necessarily have a full charge if you're if you're um hooked up to the grid in that way but jeff you had another comment you want to make uh, yes and, and you just pretty much said it, uh, battery technology has changed over time and there are control systems that are in use that uh, facilitate longer life. And that's exactly what GMP uh, was talking about with the uh, resiliency zone. Uh, it would be necessary to have an appropriate technology um, and that kind of control and, and know what the longevity of the system is. All of those things are important. Yeah. Um, the question really is, is is there enough flexibility to consider this if it meets all the criteria that the fossil fuel generator would meet? Can I make a comment? I just... uh, um, this, this let someone else talk. Um, we got the, um, yeah. um, Joan, you have a comment? No? Well, I'll just add a, a comment, which is that I live off the grid as well. Um, and we have a lot of regular battery maintenance that has to be done. And it's not, you know, that hard to do, but I think it's very different when uh, you're in a residence and, you know, the batteries are providing your power at home versus a situation 
situation like this where essentially that um, generator sits there uh, quietly and is rarely used and uh, only in an emergency. And to, you know, there might be someone like Frank or someone else who's prepared to once a month to come down and run the generator a little bit and check on the batteries and stuff. But uh, I think the reality is it's hard to maintain that. And it's easy to forget about it or somebody, you know, leaves and then you have to find somebody else who's willing to do that and be reliable. And because this is an emergency system, you need to make sure that thing is prepared to go when you need it. So um, speaking personally, I, I'm totally for off the grid living and um, living green when you can, but I just don't think this is a situation that would work well in the, for that kind of thing. Um, so is, is that, uh, is, the, excuse can I finish? me, could I just finish? I'm sorry, excuse me, I thought you were. I thought. Uh, so I, uh, I just want to recommend that we, we stick with the, the propane. Um, I agree with that, Joan. And so do I. All right. Um, so I, I think we should go ahead and, and, and put the order in and get in line because I'm, I'm not totally trusting the um, supply chain nowadays and i think the sooner we get our name on on something the better even if it's not going in until the spring okay um, well, i just want you know i um i'll do it as soon as i can but i'm really under the gun right now to finish all the fema work mm -hmm. in december so i i'll be glad to jump on that as soon as i finish that all right in all you know you. in all due respect dune are you there yeah, I'm still here. You know, this is a great conversation of a transition of power and survival and things. But I, if 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 Jeffrey and I could have a conversation, do you know how many Tesla cars run out of energy while I'm on the road and they're saying, where can I hook up? And their wife and their children are in the back seat and they're in this $80,000 vehicle. And they're saying, where do we... Where, where do we go? And I want you I want you to know that I have offered those people private residents that have total um, power supplying places where they can go and they're like, oh my God, thank you, Robert. And I'm not going to mention the people that have hookups to Tesla, but you it's along um, yeah. It's, I, yeah, yeah, your point is it's um it's still an emerging technology, and it's not um, in, in in terms of an emergency generator to to power the town office and emergency. That propane is probably a little bit more of a robust solution at this time. I totally agree with Joe yeah. because yeah. Uh, we're going. To, okay. we're going to go so we're gonna, Robert. We're gonna um, move yeah. on, but I appreciate your um, your support and, and input. Um, the next item on the agenda is a discussion about ideas moving forward with the EEI findings. That was the evaluation of the town buildings, their state, and how to move forward as a board. And um, excuse and me, Frank oh, I'm sorry. Could you just tell me what EEI stands for? I apologize. Oh, I don't remember. Thank you, Martha. I, I wondered e that today, too. What is EEI? Yeah, we talked about this at the last couple of meetings. Energy Efficient Investments Incorporated. This was okay, a thank you. company that was... Um, We're good. In, yeah. There was the building audit for the town buildings. And um, Frank had some thoughts about the, the practicality and the necessity to probably put together a, a separate task force to really um take these this input in and that could should include some people more versed in the construction trades that could really um interpret and and you know help to to guide action moving forward about that Did, frank do you want to speak to that well i don't don't really have too much to say about it doom but i i think that's the best way to move forward with this to get more people involved we're always listening to people that come in and say, you know, geez, what are you going to do or how are you going to manage this? And, and I think for the three of us on the select board to try to come up with some plan is just 
more than what the select board should be looking at. And it sure would be nice to get some people that have some some knowledge and some and can offer some some constructive input to where we go from here. And I would like to see that happen. And I think the way to do it is to uh, have a special select board meeting and just have that as what we're going to talk about and see how many people we can get to to uh, join in and and maybe form a citizen group that can uh, kind of figure out a path forward for us. That's my thought. Yeah. And if there's anybody out there, like if Martha puts it in the paper, if there's anybody out there with so, interest, they can contact us now. So yeah, Martha, that did does that clear to you? That's not a, a bad thing to have in the paper and in, in inviting people that would be interested in I can that. I can put in the article that you suggested that you would have a special meeting, but if you if, unless you've, you've got a specific date or time, I can certainly put that in if you have. <laughs> Um, um, no, we don't have a specific date or time now, but what would, yeah, just putting it forth that um, uh, we're open to, you know. If anyone's interested in serving on a committee regarding the condition of the buildings and improvements needed in our town, they could contact I, mean, I, can, I cannot hear you. She's saying, is anyone out there is interested in serving on a committee that would be focused on this issue of the condition of the town buildings and how we go about addressing those, um, it'd be good to um, put it out there that we're um, looking for for contributors to that. So to discussing the condition of the buildings and, and suggestions, and they should call like the town office and, and talk yeah. to Julie about it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, June. Yeah? There's an incredible force of great people that will do everything they can to uh, scrape paint and make the town hall of Rochester look proper <laughs> in anything we need to do. It's just asking the people that aren't here, they don't get on these meetings, but there's a force of great people in this town that will just offer their service. I'll offer the services. What do you want done? If you want the town clerk's okay. office power washed, I'll power wash it for free. All right. Uh, we may take you up on that one these days. It is a little bit tricky with the lead paint issues, and we have, you have to, it's the, the days of the volunteers jumping up and scraping and painting the buildings, at least on the public buildings. It's not so easily done that way. But, um, but that's why we want to... Um, I agree with Frank having a special meeting that is focused on this topic. It, it makes sense. It's not. And do you have any? Um, excuse me. Do you have any idea of when you might have it, like no. soon or like in the next few months or something? I over could say about. Over the course of the winter. Over over the course of the winter, Martha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hold cool, a special the meeting this winter. Yeah. After the holidays. Yeah. After after the holidays, probably. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, Can I just add one thing before you yeah. move on, Dune? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Martha, just just say we're we're looking for interested parties, like Pat said. I, I right, think that's right. important uh, yeah. to see what kind of response we get before we issue any any time for a meeting. I I think we need to see if people are interested in that. Uh, this is this would be kind of more of a project for a select board can handle at this time, I think, with all the other issues that we deal with. And that's why I think that's it's a better way to go. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, Joan, um, you're already speaking about the generator and, and do you have any other updates other than being under the gun to finish up the, the FEMA paperwork? <laughs> I don't wanna to make too much of that, but the only other item I have is uh, Dune, I'll be drafting a letter for you this week uh, for you to sign. Uh, I finally was able to get some information on how the town uh, is able to decline the FEMA funding for the retaining wall. Um, we will be having to return the funds, of course. And what I was told today is that uh, we have to send a letter uh, which just you know, says that we're declining that part of the grant from FEMA and give the reasons why. 
and uh, apparently the funds will be returned to the state and the state will take care of returning them to FISA, uh, sorry, to FEMA. Uh, so the amount that uh, will be returned is $15,799.60. That's what FEMA has paid us already. That's 75% of what they estimated uh, the retaining wall project was gonna cost. And just for the, the public's um, understanding, would you summarize what why that project kind of um, came up against a, a wall, shall we say? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, we originally thought it was a fairly simple thing, but uh, at the time that we were required by FEMA to uh, sort of do a quick design of, of the project and do a cost estimate, it was... Uh, was at the end of 2019, and everybody was just going too crazy, uh, especially Cooter and his crew doing road repairs to be able to spend any time figuring out how to do that retaining wall. So we agreed to have FEMA do the, the design, at least a preliminary design and the cost estimate for us, which they offered to do in cases like that. And unfortunately, um, once we were able to hire uh, an engineer, uh, this was last summer, it was sometime well into 2020, I'm forgetting exactly when, uh, to actually take a closer look at what the problem was there, what's causing the sinkhole, and what would be uh, the best long-term fix uh, for a rather sensitive situation there with uh, you know, the sewer line as well as the outfall, the sewer line paralleling the brook there, as well as the outfall, which is the thing that, we're, that was causing the, uh, the sinkhole. We realized it was more, uh, a more extensive job than what FEMA had, had estimated for. And as a result, uh, the amount of money that they estimated was going to be too little. And after discussion at a select board meeting a number of months ago, uh, you decided that it made more sense for us to uh, decide not to pursue the project right now and at that point, I think we were hearing that there was going to be a lot of federal money flowing uh, through the state, possibly for projects of this sort, um, town infrastructure, that it made more sense to, uh, to wait. And also consulting with the engineer, Cricket, uh, who advised us that she thought things were stable for the time being um, at that site, uh, you know, the only thing that could upset that opinion was if we had another great big storm. Um, and if we don't be now and we were able to uh, raise the money for the project and do it, then we'd be okay waiting. And can you remind me exactly where the retaining wall is? I've forgotten. It's along, uh, I, I guess it's Brook Street Brook, which is right okay, near right. this. Thank you. Parking lot there. Thank you. We had permission to, to do it on the on the low low end scale, um, we could have probably done it for the fifteen thousand. But one of the concerns I had at the time was if we did it and the fix didn't work and we got into the sewer system um, through another flood of some sort, we would be probably responsible for that. So I felt an engineered plan would be a lot smarter to go as far as our liability down the road. Um, and that was one of the reasons why we chose to go this way too. Um, all the bids came in a lot higher than we assumed they would and yeah, right. drove us in a position where we hated to, we couldn't really afford to do it. So um, we should have probably looked into it a little differently. I, I, that was probably my call where I made a mistake on, which you know, I'll own that. That's the way it is. I'll, I'll learn from that situation and go forward with it. So uh, that's why we chose to, to do it the way we did. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious if um, now with some of this new stimulus money that's opened up, maybe if we approach this as a, a sewer project versus a retaining wall project that may um, give us access to funding in a different from a different pot there. Yeah, well, certainly town infrastructure for both sewer, you know, stable. Yeah, yeah, to, to protect line. that line, yeah. Right, and yeah. also it's it's a stormwater outfall. Um, right. And so, yeah, it's all sort of the same, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, but so um, returning this money doesn't preclude us from applying in the future again, I, I would presume. To FEMA? Yeah. No, I, I wouldn't think so. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The reasonable reason to decline the money. Yeah. Can I make a comment? Sure. Well, look at Nancy Woolley. She's got her hand over her face. I just yeah. want you guys to know that I'm not in this meeting to be a uh, uh, an interrupter. I'm involved with Bethel and Rochester. Both towns are incredibly resilient and need to grow. And my my question to everyone on this meeting is how in god's world can we get can we get the taxpayers not get them but be resilient with regards to the tax monies that are paid to the town without being dependent on fema two rivers out of quichi all we do is get grants and we depend on them and then if there's a disaster and, and Joan doesn't have a, a, a confirmation from FEMA or Two Rivers out of Quiji, we're cooked. So, so my, my point is, can we, can we look seriously, everyone, look at the tax base, and I brought this up many times, 92% of your taxes go to the education department. Right. Right. We have no control over that in, in this board, in this well, meeting. Well, well, you know, Robert, well, if, well, 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 no, wait a second. 92% of your property taxes that are paid by taxpayers that work hard every day go to the education department. Meanwhile, Joan is trying to get a wall built on Brook Street. There's a problem. So, um, Robert, if you want to maybe... Uh, at the end, when we get public comment, if you want to go on, and we'll give you a chance to speak on that. But um, five minutes, you know. But um, I think that at this point, um, we'd just like to keep moving forward. Respect. So, uh, yeah, um, Joan, are you finished there? I am. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't see anyone here from the library on Zoom or in person, so we'll go on by that and um the highway uh, they're prepping for winter um changing tires and mounting snow plow frames um they um been doing some grading terry you're here anything on the utilities front well it's just one some of that grant money comes we got some projects that need to get done yeah mm -hmm. terry just says that when some of this grant money does come there are some projects that need to get done um, well, I, I'm, I'm curious about the uh, uh, the project across from Terry Severy's house. Uh, is that a new uh, generator being installed by the private owner, or is that a replacement? That's a that's a private private owner's, um, I believe. That's at least what Terry is indicating there. That's nothing relative from the municipality. Um, well, there um, was concern. There was concern about the property of Terry Severy regarding the sale of the property with the um, that, that has not nothing that no. has nothing to do with um, that I, what you're talking about there I don't think um, Jeffrey Gephardt um, as an energy coordinator we had you speaking a little bit already but is there anything else you'd like to to speak about tonight oh uh, you're muted sorry Uh, I am uh, waiting um, confirmation of an appointment uh, with Jeanette and the Vermont Pres Preservation Trust to take a look at the building envelope um, and what could be done and who's good at uh, working with that kind of material and all of that kind of thing. As soon as uh, she's able to pin down a date, uh, we'll be starting the process of looking at that, that enclosure. Great. Um, the Rochester Area Climate Initiative um, meeting was held last week, and there will be uh, there were uh, 
a group both on Zoom and in person that went through the collection of ideas for Rochester, ranked them and selected some priorities. Um, the next step would be a virtual meeting on December 6th uh, to review uh, how to structure task forces and uh, to go about tackling some of these items. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that I need to go into too much uh, on the uh, Rochester area um, climate initiative as board members were, uh, were available to, to hear about that. Excuse me, Jeff, the, the part at the library building, you said you're meeting with Je Jeanette Baer and the Preservation Trust to look at, but what part of the, is there a specific part of the library building? I can't remember that you're looking the at. The walls are, the walls are basically not shedding water appropriately and we've got so a lot we, of rot on basically the building. Basically the exterior of the building is, is what you're looking at, not the interior. Yep, okay. the building yep. envelope or enclosure. Envelope, yeah. Yep. Jeffrey, I, I know exactly where you're talking about, and that's three feet above the foundation of the library. Well, it looks right. like there could be some Doing penetration great. points at a higher amount, higher level too. Yeah, yeah it's, it's about six feet, but I looked at it and I thought, oh boy, we need a, uh, a water deflection of six feet high. No, you're, you're, that, that's a good point. The so, Yep, yep. It's um so that I'm glad to hear that um you go you and Jeanette are are uh, moving forward with the preservation trust. That um, seems like a good opportunity to get some input. Some of this uh, initiative that we attended the other uh, the first of last week um, that might be useful in some of this too. Don't don't you think, Jeff? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. so we may even be able to encompass some of that into the group that we're uh, trying to get to to look at our buildings um, yeah. to help out with that. Well, Jeffrey, uh, may I make a comment to you? There should be a French drain, uh, a, a trench dug on the north side of the library, uh, probably eight or 10 feet deep, filled with heavy gravel to to, to reduce that overflow because the north side is rotting. Well, we'll certainly take a look at, at we'll all take a look at all the components okay. that uh, contribute to the problem that we have. Yep. Well, thank you. Um, we didn't have anything under old business. We come down to public comment. Robert, is there anything that you didn't get a chance to speak about tonight? that you wanted to? Well, um, Dune, thank you for the compassion. Um, one thing it. that I want, I, I have a question. Uh, on Wednesday, I believe at 8.30 in the morning, there's a Board of Civil Authority meeting regarding a property. Um, no, I don't think it's regarding the property. This is, um, this, this is regarding the, redistricting and the board of civil authorities um comments on that but what what area is are they commenting on the the state redistricting of the representative structures for the the, the towns or surrounding towns oh yeah the way, the way it's uh presented on the uh, uh the copied Bulletin, bulletins uh, really doesn't bring in the fact that there's rezoning going on. Well, that's it's that's not, statewide. It's not so. re, re, well, it's redistricting more than rezoning, I suppose. But that's a state statewide issue. You, I, you can see it in the news. Um, but anyway, that's what that meeting is 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 about being held for. Okay, it's not about West Hill. No. Okay, well, I think um, the, the owner of West Hill uh, should have a proper and very succinct survey done of our 112 acres before the planning board, planning and zoning board. This, um, you're, you're commenting on, on something that happened in the, the planning board. This is the select board tonight. So that's not really our, um, our okay. purview tonight. 
So um, will you be on the uh, planning and zoning board like you were last week? And will you be on the uh, board of civil authority meeting of this week, Doom? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, and that's that's it for tonight. Thank you for coming, okay. cyber folks, well. and thank you well. for coming in person.